Hey guys, it's Chadwick here. I uh, wanted to do a quick walkthrough of how you use DaVinci Resolve 10, which was recently released, to create dailies for use in Avid uh, for offline to online projects. So here we go. Um, we will log in, and what I usually do is always start up here as a, as a uh, home base, the untitled project, double click on it, and we have to change a couple things real quick off the bat. So we've got the settings gear down here. And the footage I know on this project is actually going to be 25 frames per second. Frames per second. It's a, a PAL project. So generally what we'll do is change the video format to 1080p uh, 23976 for our spots here in the US. Um, but this footage that I got to test with is uh, 1080p 25. So change that there so I can see it on my broadcast monitor. Uh, we'll change time code to be calculated at 25 as well. Uh, again, if this was a commercial I'd normally be working on, it'd be 23976. And one checkbox that Resolve really should make a default here. Um, under time code, we want to do embedded in source clip file. That's correct, but we want to check the box here for assist using real names from the click on embedding in source clip file. What this does is it makes sure that we are carrying the metadata that is in the uh, stuff that's shot on the Alexa or Red Epic or C300 or whatever camera you're shooting with, and it carries it through the uh, the whole the whole pipeline. That uh, real name or tape, whatever is called, is a uh, is carried in the EDL when it's uh, you know exported for uh, online finishing somewhere else or color correction. Super important. We want to make sure we keep that when we're editing uh, with these dailies that we're making. Click apply and cancel. And now we need to save it. Say save project and name it something that makes sense for for uh, you know whatever you're editing. So for this, we'll just call it. Um, Avid Dailies um, 25p um, test. Okay. One thing to note here: the name that you call this will be assigned to the MXF files if you create MXF uh, dailies out of Resolve. Uh, the way that I actually prefer to work is to create QuickTimes and fast import those into Avid because uh, it doesn't matter what this is. Um, the advantage to using Resolve systems, Resolve Lite, um, is you can throw it on a bunch of computers that you have around your facility and make a lot of dailies really quickly. So, um, you know, that's a pretty awesome. You're not tying up your Avid um, with uh, doing all the transcoding for you and not editing. So, uh, this also lets you bake in, uh, you know, uh, some contrast to make the footage look more normal, which is also super important which we'll get to. So let's uh, click save and now because the project saved we can come back to that gear switch and turn our auto saves on and having an auto save is super important especially when you got people you're working with and computers crash so there we go um, now we want to go over to media pool and pull footage in. You can tell down here we're on the media page and we'll click the plus and let's call a whatever folder is the same that is the card folder that you have on your um, once you've copied the media off to your hard drive or SAN or wherever you're working on. So we'll uh, we've got that. We'll call this one. Uh, let's say it's camera A, card one, and then I always like to throw the date on there. So 2013, November 22nd, right? Now we can see this here. We see it over here. That's how we know where we're putting the footage. And um, this is actually just a link to the footage. I'm not actually moving footage. Click Do Not Use. This is a volume. I've got um, some footage in here to play with under Assets, Video, and Source. Now, this is a, uh, a folder template that I built uh, using Post Taste, which is a super awesome free tool that's out there from Digital Rebellion. I'll throw the link in there. And um, I definitely recommend. Uh, figuring out what folder system works for you and in the place you're at um, so everything is uniform from project to project okay if I click on Alexa log this is the footage we'll pull in and um, see you've got three shots up here 
the easiest way to get it in though um, especially if it was red and or a DSLR stuff and it's buried into several folders is right click choose add folder and subfolders into media pool click it done okay we've got this footage into resolve now I'll go over to the next page which is called edit and it's basically where we're gonna set our timeline up to do this we have to create a new timeline okay click the plus button up here we are going to whoops we're gonna change the timeline name to whatever the card name is okay so this is card one from camera A and then I th always like the date just to keep things unique and um, new timeline that is empty okay I'll come over here to the you can see the footage clips the media pool clips we can select them all and we've got our timeline loaded you can see over here and all we're going to do is overwrite those to the sequence and boom what we've just created is a string uh, of all the footage that we shot on a specific card that's typically how I'd make the dailies do one card at a time just a lot quicker and easier to make the global adjustments to all of it great now we move on to the color page Okay. in here um, the first thing I want to do is bake a, uh, a LUT that's either provided by the DIT or for instance this is just standard um, log C stuff from Alexa so it has a built-in LUT within uh, Resolve so what I'll do is I'll go up to track what we do instead of being on a, a track a clip corrector on a track corrector it changes the values on all clips that are in that sequence basically so to create a new correction on it we will go up to nodes add serial node it's an option s and if you right click on the clip and go to 3d LUT go to ARI and we've got this ARI Alexa log C it's a rec 709 LUT okay click on that guy and what this has just done is made the footage look real and normal again super important I think to always edit whenever you can with uh, Rec 709 baked in uh, especially for TV commercials which is what I deal in um, so that way creatives don't get used to looking at this flat muddy image um, that um, you know that does not look good you can see the before and the after it's pretty drastic because what will happen is they'll go into the color session thinking, hey, I kind of started, it starts to grow on people after a while. And they don't realize how gross it actually is. Um, and it kind of looks like an Instagram filter. And it's generally not what the DP is wanting to, um, what, what he's really wanting to create. He's just giving you the log C stuff so there's flexibility. So if you don't show it to them, they don't get used to it. Um, and, you know, it just makes a better looking show. So the next thing I would do after we've applied this log C LUT, now maybe this is good enough um, if you're in a real crunch and you have to make them super fast, you just do that. Um, but I like to go in generally and, and make um, a little bit, uh, not specific uh, corrections, but just, just a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, just make them a little nicer. So I'll go under clip. We've got a corrector that's already set in here one serial node and I will use the color wheels with uh, under the log that gives you this offset uh, wheel which makes global changes to the whole image so for this shot and specifically it's a little underexposed so I'll use this to bring the overall brightness up on it and then maybe you know the black levels are a little too high now so I, I can go ahead and drop those back down something like that you know looks fine to me I go on to the next shot. Uh, this one I think looked fine as is. I won't change that at all. And then this shot, you know, it's probably a little overexposed. So I'll bring this, drop it all the way, not all the way down. I'm bringing it down a little bit just to sort of recover a little information in the highlights. Um, maybe drag this down. And you know, if the white balance is off, then uh, you know you can move the color wheel around and and fix that here as well. But very quickly, we made footage that looks usable to edit with for an offline and uh, you can see the before and after by uh, was a command D we'll go before and after on that correction and if you went over and did the track one it's more obvious because that was what actually put the initial curve back into the footage alright so we've got um, 
say we had, you know, this might have been 40 shots or however many were shot on, a, on one roll. And um, we've got those all set to go. So I always like to save this point. Then I jump, we skip the, uh, we'll jump over to deliver. We skip the gallery page. That's really only used for colorists when they um, are saving stills to, for certain looks. So we jump to deliver real quickly like that. We're on the first shot here. I like to make sure we're at the beginning. Mark an in. So I jump to the last shot. Okay. Go all the way to the end. Mark an out. And you know you've selected every frame then. This little bar is kind of new and, and nice. Uh, kind of looks like a work area in After Effects kind of deal. And that basically just shows you we've got everything selected. So what we want to do to output is uh, I'll walk you through making a you know, a, a setup here, or a preset. We want to export the timeline as individual source clips. Okay, so don't do single clip, but just make one file out of everything, which is definitely not how we want to edit. We want to render to uh, QuickTime files. This is uh, so that I can do a fast import, and that um, does take a slightly longer than if we were to do MXF media for Avid. However, the advantage, I think, outweighs it in terms of when you're going to close the project out at the end. Um, like I said, if you chose MXF here, what that is, means is that um, the files are going to be great. You can put them in you know, this backdoor way of just dropping them into a numbered folder and Avid Media Files and dragging the media database file in. However, um, the reason it's not awesome is that uh, the project name that you set your resolve project as actually gets baked into that MXF file. That can cause problems for media tool or media mover. However, you're um, trying to consolidate your footage or move your footage at the end of the uh, the show to clean up space. Um, all that's going to be related to your resolve project, and what that means is you're going to have. Uh, footage for multiple, lots of footage from multiple uh, projects, MXF metadata inside of your one main Avid project. So for tidiness sake, I like to do the fast import. Um, so we will choose QuickTime and we'll change the codec here to DNxHD36, okay, which is great standard offline editing codec. Um, we're going to leave frame rate at 25. Again, that would have been 23976 for an American thing. And we want to check the box to render audio. This will take whatever scratch audio was on that camera. Um, makes it easier for syncing or having a guide on there. Might as well keep it if it was there. And then down below under file name, we always want to use the source file name. So the file name should match exactly back to whatever the source was. Cool. Uh, we want to render the job to click browse. Um, you jump have to jump back through their file browser in here. And uh, assets, video, we have a folder here for transcodes. And then what I do is make a new folder inside of transcodes so every card gets its own folder inside of transcodes as well. I name this exactly the same as it would have been in the source folder. So this is camera A, card 1. 1 3 for 2013, 11, and the 22nd of the month. Click OK. Click OK. Sweet. That's pretty much all you got to do. Um, this is going to render out pretty fast. We've uh, you know, only got 816 frames to render. To do this, we go over here to Add Job to Render Queue. And there we go. And hit Start Render. If I call your attention up here to the top left, it'll tell you how fast it's going. Right now it's going 55, 60 frames per second, which is pretty fast. That's because we're rendering out uh, Alexa ProRes 4x4s, um, which is a good codec to another inch of frame codec, the DNX 36. The H.264 stuff is going to be slower. Red stuff is going to be even slower still, depending on what your debayering settings are.